welcome to tonight's episode. Now, tonight's episode is epic. It's full of interviews. It's full of worship. It's full of the word. I invite you to listen in. Now, given the fact that we have been busy this entire weekend with the festivities, it might be something you would be interested in. If you look through the scriptures, it will tell you that when he was in the Potiphar's house, he had favor because he was prosperous. When they put him in the prison, he had favor because he was prosperous. Everywhere he went, he went with favor because of the spirit that was in him. You cannot allow anybody to mess up your spirit because it's in your spirit that God gives you revelatory experience. Welcome back. Now, let's take a listen into one of the sermons that were shared this past weekend, which I believe, in my view, is absolutely important. Let's listen in. You don't turn folk away because of your standard. You help them to meet it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This house in Santon is a hospital. And everybody in here is sick. And the only person who is not sick is the great physician and he's got a chart on every single one of us. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have as much right to be in this house as you do. You don't own this house. God owns this house. And if it's grace, none of us deserve to be in here. So how can you put somebody out of a place that you don't deserve to be in yourself? Give God a praise and turn to Chronicles. Woo! Uh, this is a great house. In the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 and it starts by saying it came to pass after this also that the children of moab and the children of ammon with them other beside the ammonites came against jehoshaphat to battle then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God? Who did us drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel and gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy father forever? And they dwelt therein and had built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us. 
to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat thus saith the Lord unto thee be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's look at somebody and say it's not your fight just, just leave it alone it's not your fight You always have to factor in that somebody is going to despise you because God has his hand on you. And particularly when what God is doing with you, he could have done with others if they acquiesced or if they were willing to sacrifice for the things of God. And somehow they become your greatest enemies simply because God has chosen you and made you special because his anointing is upon you and his hand is great in your favor. Ooh. And somebody is not going to like the fact that God has blessed this house to the extent that he has in such, in such a short time in some people's thinking. And so the Bible is replete with the problems that comes from being anointed huh. just think about it that when God makes you special the enemy can't stand it simply because you were with him at one time mm -hmm. you consider that it started in the Genesis it began early that whenever God shows favor to any particular individual, somebody else close by is not going to like it. So one should use the negative positively. One should understand based on the fact that somebody close to me resents my movement to another level uh, that should help me to co-sign that I actually have gone to another level. If I wasn't sure, I'm sure now because the people who are closest to me have grown resentful over the fact that I am successful because God laid his hand on me. Uh, I, can, can I go deeper before I go higher? Uh, the fact that Joseph received a coat of many colors uh, simply became a monument. It became actually a monument to the fact that he was special because of his father. It is something that you have to be very significantly attuned and that is that there are certain actions and certain things that you receive that spell out a feeling that is abstract because love is abstract. Uh, yes, and favor can be abstract until it is exhibited by a material act of God. 
because uh, it's in his mind. And uh, I can love you in my mind, but nobody really knows how much I care about you if it's just in my mind. But when I bring out a diamond ring, or I buy you something exquisite and extraordinary, then what's in my mind has just exhibited itself in the material thing that I passed on to you. Now, as long as there is no coat, his brothers can simply speak based on what his father says about how he feels about Joseph. But now we see a coat and the coat represents an inner feeling that the father has now made outward with the expression of the coat. Now I just want to tell some of you sitting here who have felt real bad about God having his hand on you because of the hell you had to go through. I want to tell you where your coat. I, 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 I just need oh I, I could go home on this I could shout on that you see many times we have a tendency and a proclivity to dummy down so that people can be comfortable with us when God has elevated us to a place where we no longer fit I mean, I don't, I, I can't help it. If God has raised me to a level and given me revelatory experiences and taken me to a deeper level, uh, there's absolutely no way that I can dummy down and try to remove God's hand from off me so that somebody else can be comfortable with me. I can't do that. If God has his hand on me for a purpose and has elevated me to move me into my destiny, I cannot erase the power of God when he ordained it before the foundation of the world. Isn't it this God who said to Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. So I have to wear my coat. I'm only going to tell you touch your neighbor just a few times. I don't want to use one up yet. But I just wish somebody would say, I'm going to wear my coat. I, I, I can't help it because God has his hand on me. I, I, I didn't ask him. He called me. I didn't buy it. I didn't beg for it. I was just as evil as anybody else, but he chose me. And I want to tell him thank you, and I'm going to wear my coat. If you don't like my colors, that's your business. Because one color represents intelligence. Another color represents cognitive ability. Another color represents creativity. Another color represents discipline. Another color represents kingly. Another color represents wealth. Another color represents intelligence. Another color represents just favor. And I'm not going to leave my coat off. I'm going to wear my coat coat and if the enemy don't like it that's his business oh I feel uh, I'm gonna behave I'm gonna behave now notice then that and and I can go further I could jump from Joseph I could go to David and David and Saul and of course God had his hand on David and for 14 years no no not 14 15 years David was the first person in a second position must I go over that again uh -huh. Uh -huh. David is anointed king and yet Saul is over the anointed now that means that David is operating within the parameters of what God has ordained. He is number one in God's sight. <laughs> 
but he has a number two position. Oh, you've got to learn how to operate in a number two position when you're number one. Ah, you got to be wise and that's why the Bible said David operated wisely because he understood. I, I, I'm going to preach the next time I come on uh, personal security and self-esteem because it's, in, it's significant to know who you are and to know what you're capable of and to know who you are to the point where you don't have to brag or you don't have to boast what people don't like is not your pride it's what's exuding out of you when you're not even trying uh, I wish you'd understand uh, uh, listen uh, honey I'm just smart that's it uh, you know I, I can't help it if I'm smart I didn't make myself smart God made me smart I, I can't help it if I'm beautiful I, I didn't design myself uh, uh, God just made it I, 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 I didn't make myself humble God just humbled me and gave me grace because I'm humble and so he opened doors because of my persona and my charisma that he gave me so I'm not trying to show you up and I'm not trying to make you look small this is just me I wonder do you understand what I'm saying and if I don't feel good about myself who will um, I'm almost there. Now, I want to suggest without uh, spiritualizing that anything born out of the will of God will sooner or later become an enemy to the child of God. Uh, must I go over that again? If you're a child of God and you have an enemy that you did not create, then that enemy was most likely born out of the will of God. Oh God, uh, I'm almost there. Uh, you'll know when. It's a critical piece. You've got to understand because anytime an enemy rises up that's out of the will of God, you have to put your foot on it early. Uh, hear me. And I'm not just talking about other people now. I'm talking about the enemies in your own life. The things that you like. It's one thing to have an enemy that's antagonistic. Uh -huh. There's an enemy that you can, you know, you're going to get out of my face. That enemy. But there's another enemy you like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm talking to some real people here and and, and uh-huh and, and, and yeah uh, they, it's easy to get over the enemy that you can't stand but the enemy that gives us the biggest problem is the enemy we like and what God says is you put your foot on it early that's why he told Saul get rid of Ahab get rid of him early because I can see him later trying to hang the children because that's what Haman was an Agagite so had he gotten rid of Agag when he should have there wouldn't have been any Agagites to threaten Israel the thing that got me the most was something I could have killed earlier in my life and because I did didn't get rid of it early it became a stronghold do you understand what I'm saying I'm talking to you wonderful young people get control of it early so that it don't become a monster and a big Goliath later and that 
was the problem here because anytime something is born out of the will of God it will become an enemy and now I understand why fear is born and can I say this to you very carefully that faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of the Lord but don't fool yourself fear comes by hearing also but the truth is that fear if you have somebody who's grandiloquent enough and somebody who's intense enough and scared enough they can bring their fear on you that's why you've got to watch who you deal with and who you let in to your heart and into your cognitive regions because God had said earlier put all the fearful out because they infect other people uh, can I preach the AOG you will have visions to take this church to a higher level and you can't have a lot of fearful folk on the board excuse me uh, you can't have a lot of fearful deacons and a lot of fearful administrators who, who feel like everything oh, we can't do that that's more than we can handle the devil is a liar if God gives the vision, he'll give the provision. Uh, is anybody here with a dream? Is there anybody here with a vision? Uh, show me the hands of those who have a vision. If God gave you the vision, it will come to pass. And shut everybody out of your hearing who's got something negative to say about what God gave you. It don't matter whether nobody in your family became a millionaire. What does that have to do with you? If nobody in your family graduated from college, what does it have to do with you? If nobody in your family has a name that is heard throughout South Africa, what does that have to do with you? If God gave you the vision, stand on it and keep coward folk from around you. I'm so glad, however, that there was something special about this fear. And that is that the enemy can mess up while he's trying to destroy. Because now he's moved the man to a place where his back is against the wall. And the only thing he knows how to do when his back is against the wall is go to God. I want to talk to somebody here who's having a rough time. When the going gets tough and things get rough and you have nowhere else to go I suggest you go to God you see this is where the enemy goes wrong he pushes you so hard and he brings that pain down on you so deeply that you have nobody to turn to but God can I preach like I feel it that's why you have to have a relationship with God because everybody can't pray when they don't have a relationship you just can't call out on his name and think you can call his name just because you heard somebody else call it calling his name calls for relationship can I just give you an example Paul I know Jesus I know but sons of Sceva who are you mm -hmm. and they whoop them naked out of town because the demon is not scared when you call the name of Jesus if you don't have a relationship oh I'm going to talk to praying people tonight oh, you have to have a relationship you put 
me in a corner and I don't know what to do. You've messed with me so horribly that now you have messed up yourself because what you have done is push me to get on my knees and seek for my spiritual warfare. I don't have the army to fight these guys. I don't have the ability to overcome. So now I've got to get God in the fight. How do I engage God? How do I get God to pick up the mantle on my behalf? And the answer is, how well do you know him? Because you will not ask a stranger to do certain things, but you'll ask somebody who's close to you for a favor that you wouldn't ask a stranger because you have a relationship with that person. Uh, can I take that further? There are some people that you need that you hate to go to. Uh -huh. And you're awful quiet. Uh, I guess you're listening. There are some people you need you don't want to go to. That's why many of you say you want to be needed. You don't want to be needed. I, I don't want to be needed. God knows I don't. I want to be appreciated because people can hate who they need but they can't hate who they appreciate. Ah, I feel like shouting on that. You will never hate who you appreciate because here's the word appreciate and this is why God even though he supplies needs he wants to be appreciated so even when he's not supplying needs he wants to be appreciate it even when he's not running to your rescue he still wants to be appreciated now that brings us to the end of the show for this evening you are more than welcome to come and join us for fellowship every sunday 8 30 to 11 a.m now our children's church starts at 9 30 until 11 a.m if you want to come for corporate prayer monday 6 30 to 8 o'clock that's the show for this evening and thank you. Have a blessed evening.